So AI is taking over the world right now. And it's been really interesting trying to keep up with all of the new technologies that have been coming out at a breakneck speed, especially in the creator space. In today's video, we're actually going to be covering one of those products. Now, this product is called Imagine AI, and it is a AI powered photo editing piece of software that kind of sits on top and utilizes Adobe Lightroom Classic. So if you are a professional photographer or an enthusiast photographer, it's very likely you're going to have a very large catalog and have a very long-ish kind of workflow. And Imagine AI aims to shorten that workflow tremendously and helps you speed things up a little bit. Now it does this by doing what AI does best, which is learning from a large sample size of examples. So with Imagine AI, one of the core features of it is that you can actually upload a minimum of 3000 edited images to the platform and it will create an AI profile for you that is based on the editing style of the images that you upload. And these are way more than just, you know, throwing a preset on and then pressing auto for your exposure in, in Lightroom or anything like that. What you'll find is that every single one of Imagine AI's edits will be an individual edit it. And of course, because it is in Lightroom Classic, you'll be able to then refine it even further. Now, part of the promise of Imagine AI is that it can edit your images at the speed of half a second per photo. And that's crazy. That's like really, really so amazing for, you know, the people who have longer workflows that need to get edits out quickly. You know, think of wedding photographers, portrait photographers, you know, event photographers, and even street photographers to some degree, you know, if you've got hundreds or thousands of images that you need edited quickly, then imagine AI might be for you. So let's get into the program and see how it works. So imagine AI is actually a dedicated software product. So it has its own app. And in the app, we have three sections here on the left, we have the home, section, which is where we are now, we have what's called AI profiles. And we can see here that I've got a, a profile ready to go. And I'll explain a little bit about that in, in a second. It then also has talent AI profiles that are already pre made and have come from other photographers who have uploaded their profiles as well, which we can also use. And then down the bottom, we have some individual projects that we can actually go ahead and start to use Imagine AI with. So as I mentioned before, there are really two ways that Imagine AI works. You can either train a profile all on your own and get the AI to understand your own specific style and use your style on your images, or you can go and use the uh, pre-made talent AI profiles that are already kind of baked in from the community as well. In this instance, I've already gone through and uploaded just over 3000 images to give the AI a profile, my own personal profile specifically for portraits. And the process was really easy. So we went into AI profiles here on the left, we created our own profile, and then we named it portrait. From there, we looked into the recent catalogs that I have. So I only really ever use one catalog. And so previous to that in Lightroom, I actually grouped together 3,373 portrait images that I had edited previously. And I put them all into a collection so that we could then easily select that within Imagine AI. And then we selected that, gave it a name, and then it went and was sent off and uploaded into the cloud. So how long this is going to take when the images get uploaded into Imagine AI's servers is obviously dependent on how good your internet connection is. But 3000 photos for me, it took just over about two hours or so. Uh, so quite long, but they, they do compress down your file. So it, it does send quite a lot faster. From there, once all of your images are uploaded successfully, you'll see that it's all done and you are ready to then start training. Now it does say that it might take up to 72 hours, but in my experience, for me, it only took me about two hours for it to fully come back and be completely 100% ready. So, you know, kudos to them for, for that. I think that's actually very fast. So now that the AI profile is all done for me, I can then go into Lightroom and then organize a bunch of images to then run this profile, this AI profile against and have AI edit all these photos for me. So to do this, we went into projects and we started a brand new project. We then went to go and select the specific collection that 
corresponded to the project that we wanted to, to edit. And then it imported them all here. Now this goes through the same process of uploading all of your images again, but this time within uh, distinct projects that the AI has already edited for you. And then you just have to click the download to review buttons on the right here. Okay, now we're in Lightroom and I actually did three different projects and I started things off with, I would say quite difficult edits just to really test the AI and really see how far I could push things. So all of these images here that you're looking at right now, are all images that have been taken on the new Sony ZV-E1 um, on a campaign that I recently did with Sony. And I had them as a an example of how tricky things could be when it comes to editing portraits and just edits in general and really understanding uh, the different light and the different colors that go into uh, editing images. And so I threw some really dark examples in this top row, some really kind of bright landscape examples. And then I even went a little bit bananas and went for a more extreme example it's shooting in team lab and having all these different colors and and this these different looks and mixed lighting and all these different environments and so let's dive into a couple of them and just see how imagine ai did so this image is a very dark dark image and i would actually most likely edit this a little bit darker than what it's showing right here just because i love the moody look i think the edits here that Imagine AI have done is really quite good. Um, it's got a lot of the shadow detail back and that's great. Typically, I would have this at a little bit more contrasty, just lower the shadows here in the tone curve just a little bit just to get, you know, the, the highlights off the face and a little bit in the window and that kind of vibe. But again, you know, the settings are very similar to what I would typically do and it looks really good. <laughs> I'm really impressed with it actually. All right, let's see how it does for some different style of uh, portraits here. So this is another shot of Steph and this is uh, with Mount Fuji in the background. Very much more of a, a landscape kind of vibe for this particular uh, image. This one is probably again, a little bit brighter than I would typically edit this image to be, but it's not far off. Again, you know, we have all of the lens corrections done, all of the, you know, the white balance tweaked as well. And just to, to make doubly sure, you know, if I go back to the, the previous image, where this was 5840 as a temperature and this is 5869. You can see Imagine AI has changed those values specifically just so that they, they match together. And I think that's quite interesting. So if I flick between, you know, these last three kind of images, everything is just slightly shifted and it's quite custom and bespoke for every single image. Very, very cool. This next image I threw in just to see how Imagine AI would handle a super, super dark exposure and how it would handle the noise levels and also what it would do in terms of mixed lighting as well. And I think so far what it's tried to do, like this is a really, really tricky shot to edit. And I think what it's tried to do is, is bring everything up to a very even level to the rest of uh, how I would typically edit my portraits. And I think it's done a good job at that. Um, for me personally, as more of a creative style, this kind of image would definitely be a lot darker, um, something like this. And then I would then bring down you know, the blacks just to keep the blacks black and keep the brights bright is my general motto of things. And then I also see that in this particular image, Imagine AI didn't even do any noise reduction as far as I can see. And that's pretty crazy because, you know, this image was shot at ISO 16,000. And for 16,000, for me, I would definitely, you know, put at least a little bit of noise reduction on there. But again, it, it's all fine. We can, we can go ahead and, you know, add our own noise reduction. And now it looks really, really good. <laughs> you know, add a little bit of sharpening to get some of that detail back. And this portrait looks great. Now, th this is actually quite remarkable for me because this type of image specifically would take me quite a, a while to tweak and balance and get perfectly right until, you know, I played around with all the colors that I was then happy with that. I specifically chose this because it has so many different colors in it and it is quite difficult in that respect. So not bad, pretty good job. Okay, so now that we've got that, let's move on to the next collection because I think this 
collection of portraits of Georgia. Honestly, I, I think the majority of these are so close to how I would do it that it's pretty remarkable. So let's take this one for example, because this is interesting. I've edited this image before in the past. Um, and while I didn't train the AI on this image specifically, it's not far. You know, I use almost the same preset almost every single time when it comes to portraits just to, to get the ball rolling. I only use ever like one of two presets. And this is the edit that Imagine AI did for me. But if we go down here to the history, you know, this is what I would do typically. This is the exact image that I exported. Uh, when was this? in November of 2022 when I originally edited this image. So between what I would do here, which is quite desaturated and quite dark, I would say, versus what Imagine AI wants to do here, which is, you know, brightens up the face, which is quite interesting. Uh, it also lifts a lot of the shadows. And I think it's actually got a mask here as well, which I can see that in this mask that it created, it kind of, yeah, it really outlined Georgia quite well, as we can see in the red here. And in this particular mask, it upped the exposure, it upped the shadows and up the whites as well. So very subtle, a little bit of uh, detail and sharpness as well. And this looks pretty good, like as a starting point, or even if I needed to send this off to a client straight away, this is for me very possible. <laughs> it's it's quite it's quite remarkable actually. But then I wanted to throw it a loop. So I fed Imagine AI a whole bunch of different portrait edits, and just for fun, I wanted to use that AI profile, the portrait AI profile, and apply that to non-portrait settings just to see what the AI would do and how it would edit these images and, and see kind of what it would look like. So I have a whole bunch of different styles of edits here. I've got like really nighttime ones. I've got some landscapes in here. I've got some street, you know, I've got some Antarctica and some wildlife in here. I've got some moody cinematic night vibes. I've got some Sakura. You know, I've got like some traditional uh, umbrellas action going on here. I've got like, you know, a little city down there. I've got Mount Fuji over here. I've got a lot of different edits here. And it's very interesting to see how Imagine AI has approached these images. So let's take this one, for example. So this is just a classic like street style shot. And in this image, this is what the Imagine AI edit looks like. And this is what the original looks like as well. So you can see that it's definitely brought up the exposure. So if we have a look on the right here, it's definitely brought up the exposure pretty well. Uh, it's given it kind of like a yellowish tinge, a yellow bluish tinge to it. And it's pretty much nailed it. Like I would definitely have this and, and post this as it is just like, you know, this old, you know, kind of an elderly woman sitting on a bench, just chilling out. The only thing I would do is then, you know, go in and, and probably just crop that like that and then post that on Instagram and that's kind of job done. So pretty cool. What about some harder ones? What about, let's see, let's, uh, let's try a wildlife one. So this is a shot that I took in Antarctica. Um, and this is a, a, an image of a whale. So this is the after and this is the before. So the before is actually super dark. I remember not getting the exposure right for this image, but I wanted to, to preserve the uh, shutter speed so that I could freeze the action and make sure I got all these birds and stuff um, frozen. And so it's definitely underexposed just a little bit. And in this edit, it's not too bad. I would push this maybe a little bit further, just a little bit like that, so that it's a little bit brighter and more true to life. But I think the settings that I had previously for my, my portrait stuff is not too bad for this particular instance as well. And then how about this one? So this is a, an image of Chire to Pagoda. This is of the Sakura season. Uh, and I've never edited this image before because I this is the first time that I've shot um, this pagoda with all of these cherry blossoms in the sunset as well. So this is nice. I don't mind this at all. Maybe a little bit too much clarity, uh, especially for my landscape shots. 
when you start to get like the the contrast in highlights and, and darks, if you have too much clarity, it starts to, to halo a little bit. And so for landscape shots, I tend to, to bring that down. And I would also go and locally um, adjust those portions so that we could then bring out the sucker a little bit more. So that was interesting. And now we're back in Imagine AI, the, the interface again, and we can see that the three projects here that we looked at just then are all here, but you can see how every single one of them has a progression from one to five. So Imagine AI also has a service where it can cull and select images for you, which is uh, number one and number two, which is super interesting. If you have a lot of images that you wanna cull quickly, I'm pretty sure that's still in a beta at the moment, but I forwent that particular option because I like to do it myself. And then number three, we fed all of our selects into Imagine AI and they edited it for us. And then we re-downloaded and, and received it back. We then reviewed it and then we went and fine tuned some of the images. Now with this, you can actually re-upload all of your final edits and all of your final tweaks. And that will actually continue to train Imagine AI's uh, profile even further. So the more you use your profile, the better it understands your particular tweaks and changes and how it can refine the profile that you've created for it over time, which is super interesting as well. But say for example, we wanted to take this profile and we wanted to make some adjustments to it because if for some reason the, the profile didn't turn out the way that we expected it to turn out, we can actually go into AI profiles here on the left, go to the profile name that we set up on the right here we've got a little menu option and we can go and adjust the ai profile and this adjust ai profile here on the right has all of the settings in lightroom classic that you would expect to have so we can go and expand all and we can then you know go and make the entire profile cooler or warmer or more green or more magenta or what have you. Then we can also do things by correction or by fixed value. So the difference between the two here is that a correction value is going to have the AI look and analyze the image and then give the value correction based on that image itself. Whereas the second option for a fixed value, we can go up or we can go down, but it's always going to adjust every single image with that particular value, regardless of whether that image needs it or not. And you can see where this could be really interesting. So if you're a person who you know loves all of their whites really tamed down, we could go and do a correction globally on everything. You can do whatever you like with almost every single option here. We've got all of the HSLs, we've got all of the color grading, we've got the detail, we've got the sharpening, noise reduction, all that kind of stuff. And so for me, you know, for lens corrections, for example, I don't always use lens corrections. I sometimes do, but I always intend to, I just forget. And so I can in the profile here, make sure that they're both you know, both chromatic aberration and profile corrections are done every single time. So regardless of the image that I'm editing, it's going to be done here. And that's really, really powerful. And then you have things like effects and calibration and, and all that kind of stuff. And then you can go and save your changes down the bottom. Now, as I mentioned previously, you can also continue to fine tune the AI for your particular profile by just continuing to tweak your images over time and re-uploading them back into the server and getting AI to then look at those profiles and look at those edits again as well. And that's it. So AI is really changing the game when it comes to all aspects of our creative process. And for this instance, Imagine AI, certainly in the case of editing our images in Adobe Lightroom Classic. Now, if you wanna try out Imagine AI for yourself, I'll leave a link to it in the description box below where they've been so kind to offer 1,500 free edits for you to try out the program for yourself. All right, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And big thank you to Imagine AI for sponsoring this video. I'll see you in the next one, but until then get out there and make something that matters. Peace.